Happy Sunday, Jim Army. Welcome to my Sunday Mass. Today we're actually going to talk about how to strengthen your immune system. I'm supposed to be in Columbus, but since the Columbus uh, Arnold uh, Festival has been canceled, uh, thanks to fears of the coronavirus, I am not in Columbus. So, since I have a free Sunday, I thought I'd come to you live as I normally do. Figured since everyone's concerned about coronavirus in their gym, in crowded areas, that we would talk about the one thing that you can control, right? You can't control what other people are doing, but you can control uh, your own body. And, uh, and, and we'll talk about how to boost your immune system and things that you can do. But first, let's talk about what is, what is the immune system. A lot of people really don't quite grasp what that is when we say the immune system. You think there's this magical system that works in your body to keep up that gives us immunity right well uh it it's it's not that simple it's a very complex system now there's two main areas when we talk about the immune system uh and and we have and we'll see over here we have the innate system and an adaptive system and so when we look at the organism the human organism here we're sort of seeing all the different uh, innate and uh, adaptive systems so with the innate to put it in simple terms it's very basic like barriers like think of your skin right it's a it, it, it's a uh, you know it's a it's a barrier that it doesn't allow certain pathogens some can cross but it, it prevents many pathogens and other uh, toxins uh, from entering the body. That's your first line of defense is the skin. Then you have mucous membranes uh, along uh, your opening, your linings, like the nostrils, uh, in the mouth. <clears throat> However, when we get past even the skin, though, we have systems in the innate system, like phagocytes, that basically eat up whatever the pathogen is. And so you can see here, this is kind of a blurry, uh, I apologize, uh, for the quality of this uh, slide, and I apologize uh, for the technical difficulties that I always have pretty much every Sunday. I'm not an IT scientist guy, so uh, bear with me with, with all the IT issues that, that we have. But I don't have a lot of my assets for this talk today, so, so bear with me with, with what I do have. But So you can kind of see here, here's our skin. That's your first line of defense, and here's the pathogens outside the body. They're trying to get into the body, right? And so the skin blocks some, right? And then we even have uh, some that gets through the skin but then gets terminated here uh, in the skin. And then we have these, what we call the innate system where those phagocytes may come. And this isn't very specific. They just kind of gobble up whatever's in there and gets out of the way. Then when we have these little more creative pathogens who have designed and evolved little tricks to get into the body, we now have an adaptive immune system. And this is really the one that we're gonna talk about. Not the only one we're gonna talk about because when we talk about the skin, what is the first thing that you wanna do to protect yourself and protect your immune system when it comes to the skin? What is it, guys? You should know this one. Wash your hands, right? Wash your hands frequently. So that's the first thing that you should be doing uh, if you have concerns uh, about the coronavirus or any virus, it's the flu. It still is uh, cold and flu season. So remember, these tips aren't just for the fears of the coronavirus, but can help to keep you feeling better through the normal uh, cold, cold and flu, flu season. But like I said, the first thing that you want to do is wash your hands. And so let's talk about briefly the body and the immune system. So, okay, here's our organism, the human, human body, right? That immune system that's composed of lymph nodes, the thymus, the bone marrow, okay? Here is these are areas of the thymus, that's where T cells get produced. These are very important uh, immune cells. And the bone marrow is where uh, your B lymphocytes are uh, produced as well. So we have, we have these two different types of B and T cells here that are helper cells with the immune uh, system. You've got the lymph 
uh, system and the lymph nodes uh, that carry a lot of the white blood cells as well. And so your white blood cells are one of the main, uh, the main workers here in this adaptive system. So here is our organism again, and we have all this stress that comes on to the body. It might be work stress, okay? It might be relationship stress, right? A lot of emotional stress. It might be things like severe heat or cold, severe cold. These all stress the body. You know what another stress is on the body? Exercise. So, when we're talking about the immune system, what's really interesting with exercise is the fact that, kind of like mom always said, a little is good, too much is not. Not with exercise, kind of a, with anything, right? A little is good, too much uh, is, is just that, too much. It's the same with exercise, okay? And what we find is that moderate levels of exercise, moderate levels, actually improve our immune system and the adaptive immune system, those, those uh, cells that I talked about, right? In the way it responds and it fights uh, pathogens and rids them from the body. Moderate intensity exercise can increase and enhance that system. However, when we're going very intense, like one of my workout programs, it has the opposite. It actually will blunt your immune system. And in fact, we know in the research, let's see if we can find the study again, bear, bear with me uh, as I have these technical difficulties as I try to find my assets. Uh, let's see, where are we? Yeah, exercise function increased acceptability. So they talk right in here that the census, the general consensus is that regular bouts, short, lasting, 45 minutes, moderate intensity exercise, beneficial for the host, that's meaning the, the person, right? The immune defense, or, or whether it's an animal, right? This is particularly true in older adults, people with chronic diseases. However, in, in contract, in high performance athletes, the infection uh, reporting is very high. So what they're basically saying is that with high performing athletes, we see a lot of infections and sickness, upper respiratory tract infections and other immune uh, issues from the immune suppression that intense exercise can have on the body. And again, it's because exercise is a stress. And so, not to get off on a tangent, but exercise is not good for the body, right? It's the response to the exercise that is is good to the body. It's the way that the body adapts to the that stress. And so when you put it under moderate amounts of stress, the body adapts and gets better and systems like the immune system are enhanced with moderate exercise. However, when you're constantly pushing yourself with high intensity exercise, it can take a hit on your immune system. However, what we do see is that it's a transient hit. So it tends to be uh, sort of after, right after the exercise bout for a few hours. So one of the things that you can be uh, take note here is that after an intense exercise session is probably not the best time to go to the mall, right? Or go into a big crowd because your body is probably taking a uh, immune hit, okay? Your immune system is, has been knocked down a bit. So you want to give it time to catch back up. And we'll talk about strategies. That's why you take post-gym. The glutamine, we'll talk about the glutamine in post-gym, how critical that is for your, for your immune function and keeping you from getting sick. So what you want to do is make sure that you're recovering. Carbohydrates as well, we'll talk about protein and all that. But I want you to be very clear in the fact that with exercise, intense exercise, like following one of my programs, is actually going to likely take a hit on your immune system. Now, that being said, I want you to focus on 
those lifestyle changes that you can make to boost your immune system, right? So, I'm telling you moderate exercise is good. So, you train intensely. Well, I said, with intense exercise, that immune suppression is short-lived and it's transient. So, what about the rest of the day? Well, what did I say? I said moderate intensity, short bouts of exercise, enhance immune function. So, what does that sound like? That sounds like my 30-60 rule, right? Of doing light physical activity throughout the day. And PA is just for physical activity throughout the day, okay? Every 30 minutes that you're sitting consecutively, you want to do 60 seconds of some form of activity. Jumping jacks, walking, push-ups, sit-ups, stretching, whatever it is, okay? Doing that throughout the day, that light increasing that physical activity that you do will help to enhance your immune system. Okay, the other thing that we can do. So step one is physical activity with my 30-60 rule. I should really say step one is washing your hands, right? That's really the first rule, is washing your hands. So physical activity. The second thing you want to be concerned with is your sleep. And like I said, with physical activity, remember, you're doing one of my programs, you're going to take a hit in, the immune, uh, in your immune system. But again, like I said, it's transient. So if you want to avoid big crowds, meeting and greeting people, don't do it right after an intense workout. However, make sure you're incorporating things like my 30-60 rule to keep physical activity, light physical activity, throughout the day, all day long. That's going to help keep the immune system up for most of the day. Now, sleep, okay? We know that sleep is critical, absolutely critical uh, for, for, for the immune system. And you, there's, here's one of the reviews of sleep immune crosstalk in health and disease. And it basically just talks about how critical sleep and immunity, they're bidirectionally linked, okay? Right there. Okay, we know that when people are sleep deprived, their immune system takes a hit. So, if you're following my OPP program, where, like I said, you can't control that intense training, right? So you're going to get a, a hit to your immune system with the intense training. But you can't control these other factors. So you want to make sure while you're doing an intense program, you're getting plenty of sleep. And... The other thing you want to consider with your programming is, is if you can't do these things, if you can't get enough sleep, right? If you can't eat properly, which we're going to talk about, then maybe you don't want to do one of my programs during a period where you may be more susceptible to things like the coronavirus, the flu, and the common cold. Maybe if you can't get your lifestyle in order, your nutrition down, your sleeping patterns, optimize for that program so that you don't get sick, you might not want to do, you might want to do something that's a little less intense so that you don't run the risk of getting sick because you're training too intensely. But sleep, so sleep is critical, right? And you know the rule, it's basically eight hours, but that really doesn't apply for everyone. We all have our sort of optimum sleep number. Some people, particularly athletes, can do better with up to 10 hours of sleep. Okay, let them sleep if they need. If your body needs it and you can get it. Some people can work around five hours, but generally speaking, we find that people who get less than that, uh, health-wise, uh, if we sort of look at the markers uh, for general health, they tend to, to, to be poorer and they tend to be uh, more overweight, have less, uh, you know, physical activity as well. So sleep uh, is another critical component. And I know it sounds like that broken record. You got to sleep, you got to sleep. It's like your mom, right? But seriously, guys, this is 
the most one of the most critical things you can do to keep your immune system firing on all cylinders, particularly when you're going through an intense training program, is to make sure you get that sleep. And you know, the other thing to think about with getting either it's the common cold or the flu is the time that it knocks you out of the gym, right? And what it does to your training. You don't feel well, you're not at your best. So keep that sleep going uh, to really keep that immune system up. Now, you can do things like meditation, okay? They found that mindfulness practices have been beneficial uh, for boosting the immune system. And there's several studies looking at different populations, females, males, older populations, where they're doing this sort of mindfulness-based stress reduction. And that's really what it is. It's the stress reduction. Okay, these all help more sleep, the meditation, help with that stress reduction, whether it's work, relationships, whether it's environmental stress, like I said, like the uh, temperature, the heat, is it cold, uh, is it altitude, et cetera. All those stresses take a hit on uh, the immune system. So finding that time, because of our crazy lives that we now live, where we really don't get many breaks between, uh, between work and whatnot. You know, you're on all the time now. You have a cell phone. That means you can check your work email 24 seven. And so we don't have those sort of breaks throughout the day that we normally get. And so doing things like meditation, even if it's just for two minutes, okay? As you break from sort of one thing, maybe you're done with work and now you're heading to the gym. You might want to take two minutes in the parking lot to literally just get in a sort of more mindful place before you go into the gym. It's going to enhance your workout. It's going to reduce your stress, and that's going to lead to better uh, immune function. All right. These are more of the sort of lifestyle stuff um, that we can do. What about nutritional strategies. Well, the first thing is really is fasting, okay? Before we get into what to eat, let's talk about what not to eat. And what they found is that with intermittent fasting, let's see if I have one of the studies up here. Yeah, here, and this is one, another one on sleep with, if you have sleep apnea, right? It changes your, your, the immune system. It, it takes a massive hit. So, and sleep apnea is not just common in people who are obese. It's overweight people, meaning bodybuilders as well, because they carry so much, even the muscle mass can lead to sleep apnea. So, likely if you have sleep apnea, you have a suppressed immune system. It's not functioning ideally, so you want to make sure to get that checked out. And then this is the stuff on stress and meditation. And the point here I want to talk about real quickly is what's sort of maybe surprising or not really surprising as we learn more and more about gut microflora is that the stress that I was talking about earlier, that, that physiological stress, here's what we're talking about. It triggers a fight or flight response. Okay. What that does is it basically disturbs your gut microbiota. Okay. So when we talk about probiotics, right, having that healthy uh, microbiota uh, in your in your intestines produces certain short chain fatty acids that we know are beneficial, reduce inflammation and whatnot. When your gut microflora are sort of out of whack and not healthy, you don't produce the right uh, fatty acids. And, and this is a problem that I dealt with personally because of the surgeries that I had where, my, where with the antibiotics that sort of wiped out my uh, gut microflora. And so I had all this bad uh, gut microflora in there. And so that was a, a problem. I was getting sick a lot uh, because of all that's all related. So we really don't realize how critical um, these sort of the, the synergies are with these other microorganisms that, with, that live in our body and 
are, are critical to our overall health. When their health is in line and we're doing things the right way, they get what they need and they provide us uh, what they need. So just a little thing here. I'm not going to get too much into probiotics and whatnot today because we really know little about probiotics. There's so many different strains and whatnot. One of the ones that I really like is Bacillus coagulans because not only does it have all the, the health benefits, but there's studies showing that it enhances the uptake of amino acids like citrulline, like glutamine, which we're going to talk about today. So if you want to try some probiotics, you can. I'm not going to go on and on about it because, like I said, the, we don't really know enough yet to truly understand how to sort of optimize our gut microflora, so just taking a bunch of probiotics doesn't seem to be uh, that beneficial at, at, this, at this time. But anyway, that's sort of just wanted to make that point that that is an important uh, player in your immune system, not just the digestive tract. Yeah, the digestive tract is critical uh, for immune function, but it's the gut because of the gut microflora. Uh, let's see. This, these are just different. We'll get to that in a minute. Glutamine. Here's one. Here's the intermittent fasting one. So, what they did is they took. This is uh, where I, they did uh, Ramadan style uh, fasting. I believe it was about 14 hours a day from from uh, 30 days, and for so. Basically, what they find is anti-cancer serum, uh, proteomic signature, fancy terms, upregulated key proteins of glucose. Basically, you're, you're better, you can, after 30 days of intermittent fasting, they found that these subjects better used glucose, better used fat, meaning they stored less fat, burned more fat. They burned more glucose versus converting it into fat. Their insulin signaling was improved, which is why the glucose uh, metabolism was better. Their circadian clock was better. Their DNA repair was enhanced. Uh, immune system was enhanced. Cognitive function was even enhanced. Uh, and, and, and so they're showing that there's numerous health benefits of intermittent fasting, one of them being a boost in the immune system, right? And so, you know, the point here I want to make about intermittent fasting is a lot of people are still under this impression that it's a sort of fad diet or something that you can only do for a certain period of time. We all intermittent fast, guys. If you sleep, you intermittent fast, okay? Unless you've got an IV in, when you go to bed at night, for whatever many of hours you're not eating, that is now fasting, okay? The whole point of intermittent fasting is extending the fasting window. Okay, because it, when we talk about that circadian rhythm there, that's really the key to intermittent fasting. It's the cycles that our body functions on. And when we have cycles of eating, low calorie, high calorie, low calorie, high calorie, it better mimics the cycles of the cell and everything tends to run better, including the immune system. So if you want to give your immune system a boost, guys, during the cold and flu season, Consider adding intermittent fasting, and hey, it'll keep you from gaining body fat through the holidays, which is when the cold and flu season actually starts, right? So it works out well. Okay, now on, uh, let's continue. I don't want to take too much time from your Sunday here. Let's talk about things that you should be eating, okay? What should you be eating? Well, protein, guys. Right? The immune system uses proteins, okay? It's a system of proteins. When we think of proteins in the body, we often think of the muscle, right? The protein the muscle. But that's not, that's just a very small part of the protein in the body. Most of the proteins are these functional proteins, things like hemoglobin, which carries oxygen, right? Well, there's functional proteins immune system. And so we need protein, especially if we're weight training, right? Because now the immune system needs 
those amino acids to rebuild itself, right? And so do the muscles. So for somebody who's training, you want to get in a good one gram of protein per pound of body weight, right? And I typically will go to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. Because, like I said, you want to make sure that you don't just have enough aminos to build muscle, but to make sure that the immune system is functioning properly. So, obviously protein is a critical goal, but most of us are probably hitting that already. Let's talk about carbs, okay? Now, one of the things that I recommend with post-gym is I have fast digested carbs. This is the active recovery matrix, and then I have the dextrose, right? That's the fast digesting carb. Well, why do I have that? Well, because we want to replenish the muscle glycogen that's been lost, okay? There's numerous reasons why, okay? We want to get that glycogen levels back up because glycogen pulls water into the muscle. Water creates a bigger pump. When we get a bigger pump, it causes swelling. That swelling stretches the muscle, and that increases muscle protein synthesis. Okay, that's <laughs> the main reason. But we also want the carbs because they help decrease that immune suppression that that intense workout provides okay and so when we're when we look at studies where carbs are provided either during the training or immediately after we see that the immunosuppression that you normally get from an intense workout as well as things like cortisol as well okay you know that for those of you who don't understand me when i'm saying immunosuppression well, when I say cortisol, right, you know that's a stress hormone, right? And we show that when stress levels are up, immune function goes down. So, when we train, cortisol levels go up. And as I said, immune function can go down if the stress is high enough, right? And so if the cortisol goes up high enough, right, that's related to stress, more cortisol, more stress. So what they found is that when we have carbs either during or immediately after, you're able to, A, keep cortisol levels lower, and also immune function. And we recover glycogen levels better, better fluid in the muscle, better stretch, and what else? Getting those carbs in post-workout is the insulin response, right? What does that insulin response do? Well, it drives things like creatine and carnitine into the muscle, which are critical uh, post-workout. So, carbs, post-workout or, or even during. And like I said, I typically recommend going with a slow digesting carb before, like an apple, uh, fruit or other low glycemic. And then post-workout, somewhere around 30 to about 60 grams of more fast carbs, like dextrose, gummy bears, which are high in dextrose. All right, now let's get into are fats okay and some of the research has talked about omega-3s that's your n3 poly that's the fat this is the fancy term n3 polyunsaturated fatty acids for omega-3s guys that's what it looks like uh, in research papers but basically what they're saying is combination of these these are the three main what we call immunonutrition uh, nutrients or immunonutrients. Glutamine being one we'll talk about in a minute, and arginine uh, as well being another one, and then the omega-3s or the N3 polyunsaturated. So we know that we want to get in a, a higher amounts of those omega-3 uh, fats. I recommend, like I said, not before, uh, as I said before, is getting an equal balance of those fats. So I typically recommend getting a one-to-one -one of basically poly, which are your omegas, saturated, and then mono, unsaturated fats. And you can read my articles uh, on that. So, but focusing in the polys on your omega, mainly your omega-3s, with your diet, however, 
If you don't think you're getting enough omega-3s in your diet and you'd have to eat quite a lot of salmon and other fatty fishes to get an adequate amount, 1,500 milligrams of just DHA, you want another 1,500 milligrams of EPA, and then there's also DPA, a third omega-3, which isn't in all types of fish. So even if you're eating fish, you're not getting all the right amounts of those three types of omega-3 fats, which is why I've got Omega Gym. Four capsules, guys, of Omega Gym provides 1,500 milligrams DHA, 1,500 milligrams of EPA, and 300 milligrams of DPA, just in those four. You can't, you can't find a more potent fish oil out there. And like I said before, not only is this important for fat loss, for health, immune uh, modulating and, and enhancing the immune system, but those omega-3 fats have now really, uh, research is really underscoring their importance in muscle protein synthesis. Having the right amount of those omega-3s can really maximize your muscle protein synthetic response after you eat a high protein meal. So make sure you're getting in adequate amounts of fats, particularly as we get older, okay? As we get older, our immune system is even more compromised. So we really need to do, uh, you know, to make sure that we're, that we're following um, all these rules, but also our muscle protein synthesis is compromised as we get older. Okay, so we need to make sure our omega-3 levels are optimized so that muscle protein synthesis is maximized when we eat a high protein meal. All right, so those are our main macronutrients. So let's talk about some micronutrients that are critical. And what we know, let's see, uh, here we are. So the immune system is, is critical for vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, B6, B12, folic acid or folate, another B vitamin, zinc, iron, copper, and selenium. All these have been shown uh, that even if you have a marginal deficiency, your immune system can take a hit. Just a marginal deficiency. And the problem here is that things like zinc, okay, and selenium, we are, we're, we're quite low. Athletes tend to, to, to lose them uh, and be low in them because of our intense training. So if you're not getting adequate amounts in your diet from the food you're eating, and then you're losing it in your training, do you think you're levels are gonna be compromised and your immune system is gonna be compromised? Yes, yes. And so, this is why I offer Vitagym and ZMA Gym, right? We want zinc, okay? We want selenium, we want copper. Okay, well, zinc can interfere with copper absorption. Okay, this is a big problem with multivitamins, okay? You take a multivitamin that has zinc in it and it has copper and you don't absorb any of the copper because the zinc interferes with the copper uptake, okay? And utilization of copper. So we need to get zinc separate from copper. Zinc can also interfere with iron uptake, which is also critical, right? And so in Vitagym, you have no zinc. In here, that's where you get it, and your ZMA. This is, remember guys, I know people think that ZMA is some magical testosterone booster or some sleep aid. Yes, there's research that shows that zinc and magnesium enhance testosterone levels. They optimize testosterone levels, okay? Magnesium also enhances sleep quality, okay? But the reason I have ZMA is because you want that zinc separate and the magnesium separate from the other micronutrients because A, it won't interfere with them and it's better absorbed on an empty stomach, zinc and magnesium, okay? These you wanna take with food, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're maximizing these levels, vitamin A, you wanna make sure that that's in beta carotene, 
check out uh, my vitamin gym. Now, let's talk about vitamin C, though, for a minute. I've only got 250 milligrams of vitamin C in my vitamin gym because we don't want, generally speaking, on a daily basis, we don't want too much vitamin C, okay? Because we know that getting super high doses of antioxidants can actually impair recovery from exercise and results. It can impair muscle growth, it can impair muscle endurance, and even muscle strength. So we don't want high levels, generally speaking. However, during the cold and flu season, in the coronavirus season, you might want to try one to two grams of vitamin C. It's been shown at high levels to boost immune function. However, don't take it around workouts, okay? Make sure you're taking it at a separate time a good four to six hours away from your workouts. That way, that high dose of antioxidant won't be taken right around the workout, okay? You don't want, want that to happen. Now, let's also talk about vitamin D. I have no vitamin D in Vitagen. There's a reason, okay? Because there's no calcium in Vitagen because calcium interferes with numerous micronutrients and supplemental calcium is not that beneficial. You want the natural form from milk, which you get in progen, over 400 milligrams per serving of calcium. So I don't provide vitamin D because you want it when you're getting your calcium. The other reason is the best way to get vitamin D is sun, okay? Sunlight, guys. It's the best way. You cannot beat getting enough sun to get active vitamin D levels versus trying to supplement with it. So if you live somewhere where you can't get enough sun, I would consider either getting a sun lamp or then supplementing with vitamin D. There you want to go with a good 2,000 to about 5,000 IUs. However, you don't want to go super high uh, as well, getting in 10,000 or so. You can be going way too high. I typically find 2,000 a day is about enough, 5,000 uh, max. But again, try try to be getting it uh, around uh, from, from sun if you can. Luckily, uh, spring and summer are right around uh, the corner. Okay, micronutrients uh, we've talked about. Let's last talk about glutamine. Okay, so glutamine is probably... The one supplement I'm talking about here that is perking up most bodybuilders' ears, okay? Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about glutamine. It's an essential amino acid, okay? Or at least under certain uh, conditions, uh, it is and isn't. Um, but <laughs> never mind that. But glutamine is, in the supplement sort of world, one of those ones that is very confusing. You'll hear experts say, it doesn't do anything. You'll hear other people say, it's so critical, you absolutely have to have it. And I say, you have to have three grams post-workout. Three to five grams is what I typically recommend. Three to five grams of glutamine. Now, why is that? Well, glutamine is, is one of the highest amino acids, the levels in the body. Okay, and it is a critical energy component of the uh, digestive and the immune system. So, what happens is when you train, okay, as I said, that's a stress, okay? That stress puts, takes a hit on the immune system, okay? Your immune system goes, we need more glutamine. Where are we getting it? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I know where I can find some. Right there in the biceps. There's some in the pecs, some in the quads. Let's pull it from the muscles. So, when you're training, your immune system, because it's taking a hit from the stress, is pulling glutamine out of your muscles. Now, the problem there is that when glutamine levels fall in the muscles, a... The, the, the muscle endurance levels drop. And we know that muscle protein synthesis is compromised when glutamine levels are low. So 
after a workout is over when you want to maximize muscle protein synthesis, if your glutamine levels are low, that's not good. So you want to get a dose of glutamine to A, replenish what the immune system took and to get any of that it needs, if it needs any more, the immune system to get it there as well, okay? So make sure you're at least taking three to five grams of glutamine post workout. Now, during the cold and flu season and the coronavirus season, you might want to get an extra dose in the morning and before bed, and even another one, maybe four a day, okay? So anywhere from one to four doses of glutamine, like I said, three to five grams per day, will A, like I said, help keep that immune system firing, but will also prevent your immune system from stealing that glutamine from the muscle. So you're basically uh, doing two good things for your body. A, helping to maximize your muscle protein synthesis and helping to keep your immune system running optimal. So, when will, I guess that's number eight here. So, when we break it down, how do you boost your immune system, right? First of all is make sure you wash your hands, okay? That's going to prevent that first, help the first barrier work better, keeping those pathogens out, right? Wash your hands and then don't go sticking your hands in your nose, right? In your eyes, in your mouth. Nail biters, nose pickers, eye cleaners, you got to change your habits, okay? That's making you sick, okay? So stop doing that. Wash your hands, then increase your physical activity. I don't mean go to the gym and train harder, I mean increase your daily physical, act physical activity. Sit less, walk more, take the stairs, not the elevator, not the escalator, park far away. You need to stay active all day long for numerous reasons, not just your immune system. Step number two, uh, two will really three if we're talking washing hands. Step number two is make sure you're maximizing your sleep, okay? Get enough sleep, guys. It's absolutely critical. Think of yourself as an athlete, okay? It doesn't matter if you don't make a living playing sports. You are an athlete of life, okay? You go to the gym to improve your quality of life, to be able to run faster, beat your friends at football, carry your kids, impress all the other parents, right? You are an athlete. So treat yourself like an athlete and get enough sleep. I get it, we all have kids. They need enough sleep and so do we. Make sure you're getting your sleep, particularly during the cold and flu season and particularly when you're training hard, okay? Number three is consider mindfulness practices, meditation, whatnot, stress relief. Maybe it's just a spa day. However, you uh, relieve stress. That's going to help your immune system. Consider intermittent fasting, right? Like I said, not only is it going to help boost your immune system and all other health benefits, but it's going to keep you lean and mean during the holidays, right? Start it right away. Make that, instead of being worried about the holidays, start intermittent fasting in November, and then you can eat what you want for the holidays, and you don't have to worry about getting sick. Okay, number five, make sure you're getting adequate protein. You guys know I've been talking about protein forever, about muscle, but now we want to do it to make sure that our immune system has enough aminos for the proteins that it needs to do its job. Carbohydrates around training can be critical for keeping your immune system firing as well as muscle growth and endurance. Fats, I like a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one of polysaturated to monounsaturated. Use my omega to get enough of the omega-3s. Don't fear beef, guys, and things like bacon. Eat it, you need the saturated fat. Nuts and olive oil for the monounsaturated fat. Get enough of that, and us natural athletes will have higher testosterone levels as well. 
And then uh, we talked, oh wait, sorry. A was really the micronutrients. Uh, so this is now nine. So A, that's out of order. We've got, make sure you're getting enough zinc, right? Making sure you're getting enough D from the sun. Vitamin A is beta carotene. You want to get selenium. Selen interesting about selenium, not only is it a mineral that's important for immune function, but it's associated with strength. People at the highest selenium levels have higher strength. Those at lower selenium levels have lower strength. What is one of the best ways to get selenium besides Vitagen? In a food form, it's Brazil nuts. Like one Brazil nut will give you pretty much all the selenium you need for a day. So your micronutrients, and then consider getting glutamine, particularly around workouts. And like I said, it's very simple, guys. There's, there's nothing magical about glutamine, like I said. It just is the fact that your immune system needs it, so it's going to pull it from the muscles. That is a bad thing for the muscles, because when, they're, when glutamine levels are compromised, the function of the muscle is compromised, and so is muscle protein synthesis. So that's not how you want to end your workout with compromised muscle protein synthesis. That's the time we want to maximize it. So make sure that glutamine is there to maximize muscle protein synthesis and keep you healthy and from getting sick. All right. I think I covered it all for those of you who are still hanging in there. So now during the cold and flu season in the coronavirus season, you guys can go to the gym. You don't have to worry uh, about what everyone else is doing because you're taking care of the things that you can control and keeping your immune system functioning properly. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you, as always, for being Jim Army Strong. I'll see you soon.